Okay, guys, like I mentioned before, if, if you just think that you're going to get this magic pill and they're going to send you on your way, that's just not how the infertility process works at all. I wish it was that simple, but it definitely is not that simple. So we came up, like I said, with a treatment plan um, short term of balancing my hormones out, balancing some vitamin levels out. And I was going to um, start on the metformin to start um, handling my PCOS a little bit. And then in one month, we would move forward after he felt confident that I was invested in the process um, and that I was comfortable with the process. We would start our Clomid to ramp up for our first IUI, which is artificial insemination. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's pretty, um, a really weird process, I'll say, where it is basically like you're going to go for a series of ultrasounds, um, taking the Clomid when you have large follicles, your husband, um, they're going to bring you in, your husband's going to give a semen um, sample and they will inject the semen sample inside of you. And you kind of hope and pray for the best after that. Um, IUIs, the first couple times, like your success rate is like 10%. Um, some people do as many as 14 or 15. So that alone was a super um, discouraging thought. So in the back of my head, I was like, okay, Clomid worked for my, you know, my middle son. Oh, it's going to work again, you know, the first time. So, I mean, I had that false hope in my head um, when in reality, I didn't know the process was going to be as lengthy as it was going to be and as emotional as it was going to be. Um, so that alone was just a lot you know, for me. Um, at this time too, I've got to tell you guys, I was taking a lot of time off of work because these visits are going to be lengthy. Um, my first appointment, like I said, was an hour, an hour and a half long. Then I was having appointments after that for sometimes three, four times a week. And most employers are not that flexible. So that's something to really consider when you start this process is a flexibility. Um, my doctor thankfully was offering 6 a.m. appointments sometimes and 6.30 appointments. So before you start the process, I want you to really think about, um, you know, this whole, this whole work thing. It, it's an expensive process um, as well. So if you can't afford to take the time off of work, um, definitely, you know, that's, that can weigh heavy on a lot of people. So, um, like I had said, I had went and I had all these wonderful tests done that are kind of uncomfortable. Um, the hysterosalpinogram, I had a saline test done in my uterus to check for things. And thankfully, both, fingers crossed, came back great. So, I started the metformin, which is not going to be a pleasant experience. You're going to be chained to the bathroom for the first week because it kind of has to regulate your hormones in your system and you can have increased bowel movements. Not fun. Um, on top of that, I started to kind of look at my diet a little bit as well. Um, I eat relatively healthy. I have celiac, so I'm gluten-free. But um, a lot of people were, you know, they was falling into this bad diet thing. Like, oh yeah, like somebody tell me if I do keto, I'm going to get pregnant. Or somebody said, oh, if I go all gluten-free, I'm going to get pregnant. Well, that's just not how it's going to work. Everybody's body is different. Well, it may have worked for some people. It's not a one-size-fits-all type of process. Um, for me, I mean, my diet, I feel, had very little to do with us conceiving um, when it was time. It was more of just my body was accepting what it was given. Um, so everybody's experience is going to definitely be different. So this is mine, and like I said, I'm sharing with you my experience. So I went back um, a month later. To my appointment and the doctor said okay we're ready today to start clomid i'm going to start you on 50 milligrams of clomid and you know that's the lower on the side and you're going to take it um once a day for five days on um, x amount of days after your menstrual cycle okay perfect well here's the problem if you're like me you don't have a regular menstrual cycle so you are waiting for a period you are hoping you are praying and when you're under stress you ladies know it takes a while to get a period. So again, the W word, waiting. Constantly, this process was a waiting process for me. So I'm waiting to get a cycle, and it took about 15 days <coughs> um, to get my cycle. I got my cycle, started the Clomid, and for me, I've taken Clomid before. Um, Clomid doesn't have that, that low 50 milligrams of a prescription really much effect on me. 
I don't get jittery. I don't have any hormone issues from it. Um, it's pretty basic. So after that, I you can expect to go back. I went back and they were measuring the size of my follicle. So we wanted somewhere between 19 and 20 um, follicle size. I was sitting at around nine. Then I had to go back three days later. I was sitting around 14. Then they're calling you back again because you have to have the optimal day. You know, they want, ooh, they want that optimal follicle size of 19 or 20. So I finally, on my fourth visit back and fourth ultrasound, had the right size. So then I'm taking a trigger injection. Um, and he's going to tell you or she's going to tell you whoever you decide to go with when you're going to trigger. Your trigger is like a huge burst of hormones that's going to be released into you. Um, give it to yourself into your abdomen. And then you typically do that 24 to 48 hours before you're going to go for your first IUI. Now, the IUI to me is, it can be a super impersonal experience if you don't have the right doctor. My doctor made it so I felt in control. I felt a part of it because if this was the way that I was conceiving my baby, it wasn't like your typical, oh, we're making love tonight. Oh, we have the best sex of our life tonight way of having a baby. Not even close. You're laying on a table with your legs up in the air and a doctor in between your legs shooting your husband's sperm in you. Doesn't sound very fun. But he made it, so it was a very personal experience. My husband held my hand. He laughed and gave us a little humor. And when he did do it, he said, all right, I'm going to count down and you can watch it enter inside you. And that alone, just being able to watch and him including us in the process, it gave me a little bit of hope. Um, and it lets you feel somewhat in control of something that you are so not in control truly of. So I went home and he said to me, well, I want you to test, you know, in a couple weeks, you'll know if you're pregnant. And, but I'm going to bring you back for ultrasounds after. Sure enough, I got my period. So round one was a bust. I was extremely discouraged. I didn't want to go forward in the process anymore. I'll be super honest with you because you in the back of your head think, modern medicine, this is going to work. So I said, all right, I'm ramping up for round two. Let's get back on the horse. But I had to wait a month before I could do round two. So again, we're waiting again. So I had this extra month in between. And he says, all right, I'm going to up your, your clomid dosage, 75 milligrams. Well, now we're at the peak of summer. I knew that I had never done the 75 milligrams, so I didn't know how my body was going to react. I was tired i was emotional because i just wanted this process to happen so badly because i had two children on my home my husband didn't have a child so i wanted to be able to give him that gift um, and have us share that experience together so i start taking my clomid you know oh yeah this 75 milligrams and maybe it's gonna work um it was definitely um you could feel it this time i was extremely tired i was very irritable um and I don't know if that was just because of the process that, it, you know, you're going through or that's just who you are, you know, at that time. Um, you know, I had a lot of support from the ladies in the group. My husband was extremely supportive and, and that's what's super important. It's like I said, you have that support system because there's going to be days when you just want to break down and you want to have someone there to help you um, on those tough days. So, of course, you know, we're doing the intercourse. We're getting excited. We're doing the Clomid. I go for all the ultrasounds again. All right, ready for the second IUI. Here we go. We do the IUI. I wait again. And sure enough, I'm not pregnant. All right, well, I'm getting very frustrated at this point because round two, I'm not pregnant. When is enough going to be enough that this doctor, I'm thinking in the back of my head, says, let's do IVF. You know, let's do IVF where we just take those eggs and we fertilize them and there you go. You're going to have your baby. Um, but he wasn't there yet. And, and, and he knew my body and I had to have faith in him that he knew my body and I had to trust this process and as much draining as it was I had to understand that I am in such a little piece in control of this so I grew up for round three now we're already like five six months into this and I'm like gosh when is this gonna happen I've got pressure from you know family like oh it hasn't happened you should stop taking these drugs they have so many side effects well everything in life has side effects so my doctor says all right max dosage of clomid let's go i remember sitting at my vanity um getting ready and i had taken my last clomid pill and i remember having the most biggest emotional breakdown 
um, that I've ever had, truthfully. I was crying, I was shaking, the anxiety was through the roof. And I just had so many hormones going through my body and everything was stacking up on top of each other that I just said, holy crap, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And I remember calling my best friend and telling her, Stephanie, oh my gosh, I just don't know if I can do this. I'm having like, this chromid is like making me a monster. Um, and I cried to my husband when he got home and we said, okay, let's see where we go after this round. Well, um, I decided I'm taking the extra measure this time and I'm getting ovulation kits on top of everything. Um, I had been doing the pee sticks, but I was going for the big boy ovulation kits, the one where you get the smiley face if you're ready. So we start, I'm going for my ultrasounds, my follicles are looking great. And he says, okay, I'm gonna bring you back in on Monday. And this was Friday because I think your follicles are gonna be big enough where we can do the third IUI. So I am like super pumped up. Well, I start to not feel too good. And I said, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test my ovulation kit. Sure enough, the smiley face came. I ovulated. And if you ovulate, they're gonna cancel your IUI cycle. He refused to bring me in. I called the office panicking. I got the receptionist. Oh, the nurse will call you back. Okay, I waited. Nobody called me back. An hour later, I called back again. I mean, it's just this cycle. You're, you're just desperate. Um, so I called back. Finally got to talk to the nurse and she said, honey, there's nothing we can do. This round is gonna be canceled. You ovulated, there's nothing we can do. And we don't know if you ovulated yesterday or today. So he's not gonna go ahead with your IUI this month. I remember just sobbing to her on the phone. And she told me, it's, it's all gonna be okay. I promise you, the doctor is gonna call you and we'll figure out a plan. So he calls me up on the phone. And he says, I want you to take the next month to two months off just to regroup yourself. But you know, it's gonna be okay. I Whatever, everything happens for a reason, he told me. And I'll never forget that. And this is a reason that we don't understand, but everything happens for a reason. And he said, but listen, if you ovulated today or you're ovulating, I want you to just try to have intercourse because you never know. And I want you to go to the store and I want you to get a product called Pre-Seed. I'm thinking, Pre-Seed? What the hell is this guy talking about? He's a nutcase. If it was as easy as this, why didn't he tell me this in the beginning? So I rushed to CVCast, I rushed to Walmart. Finally, I find it at Walgreens because nobody has this product and it's not cheap and you use it while you're having intercourse. So I'm like, all right, I call my husband and at this time my husband's so sick of having sex with me because I'm making him have sex with me all the time because I think that that's gonna be the way to have this baby. So my legs are up in the air and I put the pre-seed in, you gotta sit like that for 15 minutes. Then it's like, all right, honey, come on. Which, it's like, come on, we're having sex on demand. Now, fun mom. Well. So we have sex. Honest to God, I tell my husband this every day. It was the most awkward, weirdest sex of our life. And I'm like, all right, well, I know it didn't work. I'm very moody. I'm sarcastic. He says, oh, well, you never know. Well, we just continue life as normal after this. I didn't use the pre-seed ever again. I had no desire to use it. I was just tired. I was drained. I was done with this process. Um, I didn't want to see another ultrasound again. I didn't want to have to go through you know, another disappointment, another round of someone saying, no, you're not pregnant and hearing, you know, those words and watching my husband's face. Even though my husband didn't say anything, you could see it in his face, he was disappointed. So I'm, you know, going on with life as usual. And we decided, my sister-in-law comes up here, we decided to go to Niagara Falls with them. And that night I have the worst headache of my life. It's, it's the end of the summer, my head is slamming. I'm thinking, oh, it's Aunt Flo, she's coming back again. We're in Niagara Falls and I smell the most delicious Pakistani food. And I joke because when I've been pregnant with each of my kids, I crave Pakistani food. I don't know why, I love it. So I'm like, oh, that smells so good, but I have the worst headache in my life. I must be getting my period. I'm super dizzy. I just feel like crap. So my sister-in-law jokes with me and says, oh, you're probably pregnant. I said, Nellie, it's never as easy as that. I'm definitely not pregnant. Well, I didn't want to test what she was visiting me because I thought that this was just something that if I was, it was too good to be true. I was going to lose baby again. You know, it was just, I didn't want to, either way I felt I was going to have heartbreak. So I wait, and two days after she leaves, I take a test. And I'm, I'm on the phone with my friend Brittany and, and you know, like we're texting back and forth. And I say, Britt, I don't know. I, you know, I took this one test and it was faint. And she's like, go get another test. And I'm like, I don't know, Brittany. I'm just so scared that it's going to be negative. So I go and I do not believe it. 
you're pregnant. Like the digital one that spells it out for you. I'm like, this can't be, this is too good to be true, but how am I pregnant? I'm cramping. I have the headaches still. Like I felt like this period was like coming full force. I called the doctor's office that day, my infertility doctor, and I said, oh my gosh, Dr. Bonick, Dr. Bonick, guess what? I am pregnant. And he said, I told you, in life, we don't know the reason, but things happen for a reason. And it was my time, then I guess. Um, I'll share with you um, in future videos that this was one of my roughest pregnancies yet. I had a lot of scares. Even though this was our time, we were very, very lucky and blessed that we were able to carry her um, and have her in the world where she is today. So that's just a little bit of our story of, you know, Isabel and our fertility process, how it went and dealing with infertility. Um, I hope that many of you can relate. It, it's definitely, like I said to you, a tough process. And this is a two part video. You watched part one, this is part two. Um, so you see, it, it's definitely, it's gonna be a lengthy process. There's a lot involved in it. There's a lot of costs involved in it. You're gonna need that support. And there's a lot of questions that we have as, as couples and that we fear and that we're afraid to ask. So those are things you always have to ask, you know, your providers. Um, and I can't stress again, always find that support because there's so many of us that are going through this and never be ashamed of it because there's nothing wrong with you. You're fabulous inside. Me, just like I always tease my husband, I got a little defect and my little defect needs a little tune up now and then. Um, so it'll happen and if it doesn't happen oh my gosh i so encourage you there are so many beautiful children out there that need a home to be fostered in or adopted so always check that out always 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 all right guys well i will check back in with you towards the end of the week and we will go into some further discussions regarding the infertility process thanks guys have a great day